everybody. Garden Gen here from Garden Gen Journey. Have you guys ever had plans laid up? You thought they were perfect and you put a lot of work into it and then all of a sudden your plans get majorly changed or you have to make a change because now your plans weren't going to work? Well, we've had that happen here on the homestead. And it was a, kind of a kick in the gut for me because um, I put a lot of time and effort and planning into my garden plans. And to find out that uh, one of my major gardening areas was no longer going to be available was uh, quite a drastic uh, kick in the gut, so to speak, because I had a lot of plants, a lot of crops that were going in that area. And now I have to scramble and rethink and replan where am I going to put those crops now. So we're going to talk about that today and just look at some other uh, things going on on the homestead. So follow me along. I figured before we go look at um, the area that um, I have to make some changes, we just take a step here inside the greenhouse and see how things are going. Like I said before, I generally don't use this greenhouse because it doesn't hold heat. I actually have a missing window um, because we have very strong winds here and it likes to blow things apart so I lost my window but we did bring out I have bought some raspberries right here I had bought some raspberries and um, they were starting to grow uh, indoors so I know I couldn't bring them out here until the weather started warming up because they're already acclimated to store temperatures so they've been inside my house for a couple of weeks and we finally brought them out to the greenhouse to see how they would do. Um, so we got a lot of, you can see there's some dead foliage here. I'm not too worried about that because um, we're starting to get new growth on them. Let's see if I can move that tag out of the way. See the new growth there. So we've got three different varieties of raspberries we're growing this year. We're going to be growing the Heritage Red the fall gold and then the black jewel raspberry. It's still um, not quite time to plant these guys yet, probably about another week. That's why they're sitting in this pot here because like I said, they're already starting to grow and things. And so we wanted to make sure that uh, we kept the, the roots nice and hydrated and um, giving the good plants a good start. So we just set them all in this pot for temporary until we can get them planted in the ground in their new home. So we're going to go out that way now and I'll show you what uh, else is going on over on that side. Okay, so here is where we're going to have our raspberries. You can see right now the area is still a mess. It's because this ground is just starting to thaw out. It's still quite frozen underneath. So really haven't been able to do much. We were able to finally get the hose up off the ground because that's been frozen to the ground all winter. So uh, yeah, the raspberry patch will go right here in this area. All right, and then right behind it, this big area here, this is the dog run. And originally, uh, the plan was that we were going to move the dogs to a different area that would be more accessible to them um, throughout the day and uh, be shaded and all that kind of stuff because this bed is obviously in full sun, or this, this uh, uh, run is obviously in full sun. But uh, we have a makeshift little tent thing right there. It's really odd looking because it just kind of got thrown up and they absolutely love it. They love this uh, run. They actually asked to come out and go in it. So we have decided that we're just going to leave it. This is their, their area. This run I had put a lot of uh, time and planning on how to repurpose it into a garden bed. I was going to grow um, tomatoes and beans and lettuces and celery and all sorts of stuff because this is a pretty large area. I was going to have my trellises in here. Um, again, a lot of planning. Um, but I have to regroup and rethink because now this isn't going to be a bed anymore. This isn't going to be a garden area. So now I have to figure out a way to move the uh, 30 plus tomato plants I had in here, um, my trellises where I'm going to put them now that we're going to grow the beans and the loofahs and things. And I can put some beans and things along the side of the uh, run here, but I also don't want the dogs chewing on them and stuff, so I'm a little iffy about that. Um, so I'm just going to have to 
a start over as far as where we're going to go from here. And I'll take you to the next area that we're going to be working on uh, that I've been replanning and replanning, trying to get the best fit for the area. Okay, this is what I have marked down as my mint bed, uh, where you see the blue crates upside down. There's are actually mint plants that are planted in here. We brought all my mint plants except for the lemon balm out of the main garden and brought them here to their own little area so they can uh, grow and spread and be happy out here without getting into a, uh, a mess. This area is also going to be a container bed uh, garden. Uh, with the mints on the ground, uh, we want to let them be because the mints that we're using are for medicinal purposes. So we just want to let them grow, let them be happy, and not compete with other plants. So we're actually going to be using this space uh, for container gardening, which is new to me this year. Um, I've only done small scale to uh, container gardening with some um, uh, reused uh, cat litter pails and a couple larger pots, but I generally plant in ground. So this year we're going to try container gardening and uh, the way I have things mapped out, I can fit about five of the containers that my husband built in this area, plus some large uh, five gallon um, pots, which I'll be using to grow, I think, to, uh, potatoes and things is what I'm going to be growing in the pots. And then right behind me here is this whole area here. And um, my husband assured me that all this wood's going to get moved. And so this fence here actually can get pushed out almost to the driveway there. Um, my husband owns a landscaping company. And so um, he gets a lot of wood, a lot of yard debris and things like that. And this was one of the areas that he just dumped the wood last winter um, because he was he does trees all year long. And so even in the winter time, he had a lot of wood and it just got dumped here. Um, but he assured me that he'll get all this moved. It's all going to be split and stacked, um, ready for us to use next year or this, you know, this coming uh, winter. Don't even want to think about that right now. But anyways, um, so I have a lot more area right here as well to um, put some more containers and things like that. I won't put anything in the ground uh, because uh, there's been walnut and stuff here. And we just want to make sure that all that dissipates. Um, the toxin in walnut has been known to dissipate rather quickly, uh, but we just want to make sure that it's all good and so we'll probably not plant anything in the ground until next year. It'll all be in containers. And uh, if I remember right, I bought uh, used, I bought used uh, five gallon containers and I think I bought almost 30 of them. So this is where they'll all go, they'll all go right here. Now I'll take you over to um, where the prototype container bed is that my husband has built for me because some people have asked about that. So hold on. Okay, so this is the prototype uh, container garden that my husband is building for me. Um, we got a whole bunch of these food grade uh, 55 gallon drums from a friend of ours. and. Um, we had cut them lengthwise instead of um, uh, heightwise, um, and they make for a longer bed. But because they're rounded, you have to uh, give them some type of cradle. And so we get a bunch of these pallets um, for free. Uh, they're uh, shipping pallets, actually. Um, generators get shipped on them <laughs> from where I work, actually now. Um, Funny story there, but anyways, um, we get uh, tons and tons and tons of these pallets. You've probably seen the stacks of them on my other videos. Um, but yeah, we get lots of these pallets. So he just took the pallets and uh, took uh, these containers and he put three of them uh, end to end. And this is about an eight foot bed here that he made eight foot by, I think he said two foot. So um, yeah, it'll work pretty good. He's already drilled some holes in them to make sure we got some good drainage. So now we just need to get this moved into place. He's going to be building me more. And those will be all in that container bed that I just showed you. We're going to be putting um, Happy Frog soil in here. Really high quality stuff. Um, 
I absolutely love it. I love the results. So even though it's pricey, you get what you pay for. And so I want good quality nutrient food. So I'm going to use good quality nutrient dense soil. So that's what we got going on there. I figured I'd give you guys a quick look at my babies because everybody loves babies. So my babies are getting big. The white ones, which are Brahmas, they'll probably be coming out within the next week. When we bought them at the store, they were rather old, or you were guessing they were probably at least two or three weeks when we got them from the store. But we didn't mind because that means that they're actually going to lay uh, eggs sooner. <laughs> so, and then we got the younger ones. We have um, the guy there with the black and the wavy white. He's a barred rock, or excuse me, she. They're all hens. <laughs> it's a barred rock. And then the one behind the white one there that's uh, that black one there, and then we got the brown one there, and the buff one. Those are Aurakanas. We have another brown one right there. Yep, those four are all uh, Aurakanas. So we have four, four barred rocks, four Aurakanas, and we got six of the um, uh, Brahmas. We really enjoy the Brahmas, and uh, we wanted to actually get more Brahmas, but they didn't have any more. And uh, so barred rocks are said to have the same temperament, the same egg laying qualities. So we went ahead and got some barred rocks too. And we really like the look of the Aracanas, especially how they look like they got puffy chipmunk cheeks because of the way that their feathers grow in tufts on their, the side of their faces there. So that's the look at the babies. So I figured I'd show you some of my uh, seedling babies since we're out here. We got quite a few that are growing. So I'm going to show you. We got some uh, beautiful collards. Colored greens there. Just lovely. And then my purple auroch. Uh, just, just gorgeous. Gorgeous, gorgeous. Love that color. Um, I brought some blue, blue, ah, blue shelling peas. And this jug actually got dropped, but I don't know if the camera can pick it up. But they actually did okay because they're peas, and uh, they're just pushing through the soil right where they got um, dropped at. So that's kind of cool. And then uh, Bloomsdale spinach is looking really nice and fine. I don't have any beets yet. I'm surprised. I figured beets would start sprouting because they are a cooler weather crop. Um, but no beets yet, no petunias. Um, there's some more of my beans, or peas, sorry, these are peas. Um, I haven't brought out any beans yet. Um, I'm waiting on my beans because they're actually going to be, um, grown, uh, with, uh, some of my beans are going to be grown with my corn and stuff. So I'm waiting a little bit to plant beans. Um, see, my red Russian kale's starting to grow. And then dino kale, it was taking its time. It's usually the uh, first thing to sprout, but this year it's a little behind. We do have some growing. So, some things are really popping. Other things, it's just taking some time. And uh, that's what's one of the things with uh, winter sowing. Is you just gotta wait and see. I brought these snow peas out the other day. And the peas are starting to swell up and get ready to sprout. So that's just how quickly peas and beans and stuff uh, grow when the weather's right. That's why I'm not worried about getting my beans out here right away because uh, they'll grow in a couple of days. They'll start sprouting and growing and within a couple weeks you can plant them. At least in my zone that's been my experience. Uh, no leeks yet. I'm surprised. No leeks and uh, no onions yet or shallots. I've been really, really surprised because usually they start sprouting around now, uh, according to my notes. Same with my chards. None of my chards have sprouted yet. So I'm a little worried on that. And usually I don't get too worried because I've been doing this for years. It'll still be my fifth year, actually. But we do have purple Vienna Karabi. So that's doing really well. We have Blower Speck Karabi. So that's doing really well. Um... My Napa cabbage, I don't remember if that's growing or not. Oh, yep. Napa cabbage is doing really good. And uh, cauliflower. Um, 
another cabbage. Um, yeah, those are doing really, really, really well. <clears throat> and so is my broccoli. Look at how packed that is. When I overseed, I overseed. So, same with the Brussels. Um, so the things that are supposed to be sprouting, most of them are starting to sprout. Some things are not, um, but we just have to wait. But in the ground, my garlic's starting to come up. I have the chicken wire over here because I have chickens, chickens that are in my garden right now. And so we need to protect the uh, different foliage from the chickens because if it's green, they want to eat it too. Let's see, I did have some calendula. I was hoping I could show that to you, but I'm not finding it at the moment. <clears throat> but I did notice that my bachelor buttons are starting to grow, which is awesome. I I planted a lot of bachelor buttons. My narrow cabbage is starting to sprout. But I planted a lot of bachelor buttons because um, I am going to be using those in my soaps. <laughs> so I planted a lot of those. But yeah, you'll see, like right there, that's a garlic bed. Uh, we put a fence around that. And then we put a fence around this. This is my herb bed. And uh, there's a lot of green in here. My perennial herbs are starting to come back up. And uh, the chickens were enjoying them. I mean, I don't blame them. You know, it's fresh greens. Um, and they've been cooped up all year with, a, or all winter with no fresh greens except for the table scraps we give them. Um, so to see this, they were like, oh yeah, yummy. So we actually had to put the fence up here to keep them out. Eventually, that's our rooster. <laughs> Eventually there's going to be a fence that's going to go along the fence line here um, that will actually keep them out because we do have a fence that goes around the perimeter but when they go out along the other side of the property they walk down the field and then come right in under the fence um, and that's a cattle fence so um, we have to find a way to try to put another fence kind of up against it but not touching it because it's actually an electric fence and that will keep the chickens out of here completely but for now um, we're letting them in so they can do their job of fertilizing getting out bugs um, and that sort of thing um, but we're gonna have to actually lock them out lock them out um, in probably a month or so when it's time to start actually planting in ground so anyways, there's a lot of changes going on here. You kind of just have to roll with it. Um, it can be a big punch in the gut and knock the wind out of you and you're not sure where to go from there. But um, you just have to take a breath and go back to the drawing board and uh, make the changes necessary to move forward. So thank you so much for watching everybody. Um, if you want to keep along with me on my journey, please uh, hit the subscribe button. If you enjoyed the video, I always ask, um, please hit that like button. It lets YouTube and others know that uh, this video was of some value to you. And uh, again, I just really appreciate you guys following me along on my journey. And I hope wherever you are, you're having a wonderful day. Bye!